What's up, guys? This is Alex Louis with your Solidity course lesson of the day. Today, I want to go over how to watch events using Web3. So we're talking about the, the front end. Uh, by this point, you've already deployed your contract. So if you haven't done so already, please look at my videos where I teach you how to deploy a contract and then mock up your JavaScript file. So let's get started. Last time we were here, we built a contract where we were able to write to the blockchain, to the Ethereum blockchain, with our Solidity contract using Web3. And I showed you how to set it up with MetaMask and request Ether. So if you haven't done so already, please look back at that video. If we look at our code, our current state right now, uh, I handle the MetaMask injection. We talked about that with the Web3. We have the ABI of our contract, which we get. Uh, and this is our contract address, which is deployed on the Robson network. These are the test variables that we use that we're going to actually write, use to write to the contract. Now, I earlier in my videos, I talked about events, event functions. Event functions are logged on the blockchain and they allow you to trigger things on, well, notice things on the client side. So basically, when somebody calls your contract function and you have an event function within your contract, you can call that event function which will then be able to be watched on the client side and this will actually be just a, a, an array of logs. Um, basically when somebody calls my set professor I, instant, I assign my, my state variables to values coming in through the parameters but I also want to log the professor event function with those values and what this does is it creates a, a, an event log on the blockchain so if we go back to Robson and we look at events it, it lists all the events that have happened in your contract due to that event function you could have many event functions so that you can watch things as they happen to your contract which is pretty much what I suggest you do if you're trying to watch something happen in one of your contract functions. We've already deployed this to the Robson network. I'm just showing you the Solidity backend code of how it, it looks. Now what I want to do is I want to be alerted on the client side. When anybody sets professor, I want to be alerted that, okay, you set the professor and it got actually written to the blockchain successfully and we can do this with web3 by writing a little bit of code the first thing you want to do is you want to define an event variable and we can do that real quick so we can say var event is equal to so we need our contract instance this would be a contract instance and then we can just say call the event say dot professor EV. If we look at back at our thing, so I would just copy this and do that. Then we pass in any parameters that we want that we want to specify to assign our, our variable. And then we can specify from what block to what block you want to read from the event. Because remember, every time that somebody sets professor, that's a block written to the event log and each block will have a different block number what I usually what I usually do is I, you, you wanna try not to so you you'll see a lot of examples that say from zero to block latest and that's okay if you wanna do it in practice the only problem with that is, is as your event log gets bigger it's gonna lag a little bit because it's always gonna start at zero so when you get to your page it's always gonna start at zero all the way down to your latest so if you've had a lot of events triggered for that particular event function you're 
your your array log is going to be pretty big so what I'm gonna do is I can take the last block maybe the last two or three so I know for a fact that these were ones that I was practicing on uh, using the set professor so I will take this block number copy it and I will start at that block now remember I know for a fact that those transactions were triggered by my set professor because all these transactions aren't necessarily by that set professor function there could be there could be a mix of, of any others that you've called when you're trying to modify a write to the blockchain right to state but I know that this particular block was one set professor call that I was doing earlier on so you gotta be careful so now it's gonna go from this block to the latest and now I have a hold of my event array the other thing you wanna do now is you wanna watch the event so that if something triggers then your watch function should trigger so what we do is we say event.watch we have a callback function and we can say that uh, if not error then I can console we'll start with console.log and we can say the block number result dot block number so what that'll do is that will get me the block number of the event that just got triggered now one thing that I want you to notice uh, as we run this code is that this actual function will get triggered on load because again this is just sample test code and I'm not doing any type of handling when it's load or when somebody hits the button so you're gonna see the the event log on the console and I'm gonna show you that right now so I'm gonna actually pause the video a bit I'm gonna transfer my files up to my server and then we'll run it alright so I just transferred my JavaScript file up to my server I'm gonna refresh the page and you see that now you see a list of uh, block numbers so we start at 629 which I believe is where we said to start from right and then we go up to latest so it gives me the latest block numbers on load right so now when I click on write professor value we look back at the code this is gonna take my three variables and then write them to my to my contract using the set professor function this will write out pending writing to block doesn't mean it has written to it already you you gotta this watch function will take care of that block after it's written but what's gonna happen is it's actually gonna print out the other blocks uh, as they come in uh, so we'll see that right now uh, let's see so let's write okay so we do that we submit okay so now it's pending writing to block so we actually have to wait and it's still writing I'm gonna pause the video for a bit and there we go so I just saw that the block got written so this is 22 this shouldn't be 22 minutes ago but it's block uh, 69207 uh, and now our new block is uh, 9287 right so this is kind of like our chain of logs so now we know that this block we successfully wrote our values to the blockchain watching the event we watched the event now what the other thing I would like to do is perhaps I want to write what got written to the blockchain so for example 
uh, I'm going to change this to 323. Three. And this is going to be John Skype. All right. So what you can do is in your watch function, you can actually access the event variables that got written. And we can do that using the following. So we can say that console.log and we wrote, you would say result.args dot now the args would be coming from your contract so if I want to see if what the first name is so then I would take that from my first name event paste it in here and that would tell me what actually got written so it would be obviously it would be John and we can do the same thing for L name and ID right but remember we have to get the actual parameters from our contract variables not from our JavaScript variables so let's do this and we get the college ID there we go so I will now transfer my file let's do that okay so now that we have our most latest version uh, I was having caching issues before so I'm going to just do this so let's take a look here okay so these are the this is the block that just got written right uh, let's take a look at our professor Oops. okay so there is our kind of like our chain right so this is the log that got written so for this block number we wrote boost 124 we kept writing the same thing so the last block number was 287 we are still gonna start from 629 and that that should be fine now I am going to click on write professor Hopefully this will not lag because I was having lagging issues as well. Uh, click submit. Okay, pending writing to block. So our Robson should look different now. Okay, so there it is. It's been pending. Hopefully it doesn't take that long. Let me pause the video so hopefully this will be done I don't want to waste your time and there it is so we wrote block number 306-9306 and we wrote John Skype and 323 which we got back now uh, the only thing I want to warn you against listening to events right on the page is that you it's pretty unpredictable so you don't know if it's either gonna time out or how long it's gonna take so what I usually recommend is yes you can watch events uh, as as you p the page load and you get the latest event you have to find a way to kind of get the latest transaction that was written so that perhaps when you're trying to write this on your own you're not gonna ha I, I at least I wouldn't do a loader and say okay I'm writing to the blockchain just wait because what I found is sometimes MetaMask will time out if it takes too long to get that event written and you don't want that either because then you're going to be responding it's going to be loading forever so what you want to do perhaps is that you write to the blockchain you say writing to blockchain please re refresh in about 15 minutes or some type of user interface logic that you can say so the user doesn't have to wait because like I said I as testing this myself I was having a lot of issues with timing and it's unpredictable sometimes it'll take a minute and then other times it'll take 10 minutes and it all depends on the network and, and this is on the test Robson network um, I could only imagine on the main network so hopefully you enjoyed it this is how you listen to events and you can listen to again you can listen to my 
YouTube channel. Please take a look at my other videos on Solidity. Name is Alex Louie, parttimeadjunct.com. You can email me at parttimeadjunct at gmail.com. I try to reply to all my comments on YouTube. Always free, no ads. Give me a like, subscribe to my channel. I can keep loading these videos. Thanks.